This video is brought to you by Avon. So often within an event-driven architecture, you're going to have a need of streaming all of the inserted, updated or deleted data from your database to some kind of a downstream system, such as maybe CloudWatch logs, maybe some analytics within Power BI or just to a message broker such as Kafka. And this pattern is called change a data capture pattern. Basically, all of the changes that happen within your database, because remember, your database is the main source of truth, have to be reflected, or let's call it streamed, to some kind of an other place, maybe one of these guys. And also, there's a focus on performance in this pattern, okay? So it has to be happening very fast. Now, if you haven't seen this pattern at your work yet, or in one of your projects, this is so common that you're definitely going to run into this at some point. And out there in the world, for example, Airbnb uses CDC to synchronize their MySQL database with their data lakes, Shopify uses it for their inventory updates across services, and Uber uses it for their real-time business metrics. Now, what are the benefits of CDC right away? Let's mention that it facilitates data mi database migrations, for example, and data replication is super easy and fast. That's why it's great for real-time analytics, fraud detection, and very importantly, all of this is happening without polling, meaning, again, it's gonna be very fast. Also, it's great for audit trails, full-text search systems, and you can combine it with an event sourcing. So we're gonna learn all of this theory, some of the best practices and pitfalls behind CDC, and we're gonna see how you can actually deploy a CDC within your Postgres database that I already have running on Avon alongside my Apache Kafka message broker. And we're gonna see an, a manual implementation with Node.js. And then we're gonna learn how to do exactly the same thing, but with minimal code within Avon. So if you're using Postgres like me, Avon gives you a fully managed production grade database with features like high availability, backups, point in time recovery, and built-in support for extensions, and of course, logical replication. All of that with zero maintenance on your side. And with Avon for Apache Kafka, you get a fully managed Kafka cluster that includes built-in monitoring, access control, schema registry, and integrations like Kafka Connect. Avon even offers a diskless Kafka option for lower latency and fast recovery in high throughput scenarios. Avon also offers other popular open source services like OpenSearch, Redis, ClickHouse, and all of that fully managed and deployable in minutes on your favorite cloud provider. You can try Avon for free and they will even give you a hundred US dollars in credit if you sign up. Just check out the link in the description to get started. So let's start with an interesting part. So this part in the middle, ETL pipeline is something we skipped. So ETL stands for extract, transform, and load. Basically, first we have to extract the data or rather the changes from the database somehow. We can transform it if we want and then we have to load it somewhere else. All right, so let's talk about extraction. So extracting the database can be kind of interesting and it can be in many different ways. You can either do it based on logs because Postgres is going to dump all of the logs into the hard disk under this URL, pgdata, pgwal, wal stands for a write ahead log. And it's going to look something like this. So every time there's a query done on the database or a transaction, it's going to basically capture this like this. Of course, we need to transform it and make it nicer at some point. And this method is the best because it's very fast and as you may already notice, we're not querying the database itself, but rather a data that's already stored under this directory. There's also a way of doing this uh, based on a query, but this is very invasive. So it's going to bring our database performance a bit down. So I would rather recommend skipping it. And of course we can use triggers. So a trigger based is basically another beast Triggers are like event listeners for databases. And this is also putting more effort into the, or more performance or more load onto the database compared to the log base. So let's say we're gonna go with a log based as you would do most of the time. Now, 
When we talk about the query base, it's actually reminding me of the outbox pattern that we discussed in one of the other videos. An outbox pattern looks something like this. So the order service is going to first of all commit the changes, then we're going to contact the other service that it can pull the changes from the database. But the outbox pattern is great if you want guaranteed automicity versus performance because CDC is going to be much performant compared to the outbox pattern. So again, there's a trade-off. CDC is operating on a database level while outbox pattern is going to be on the application level. So you got to choose wisely. Now, let's talk about this part again about extraction. So how does the database actually allow you to extract data from its logs? Well, this pattern is called logical decoding. So logical decoding is implemented by decoding the contents of the write ahead log, as we mentioned, which describe changes on a storage level. Okay, so you can either do it manually by, for example, using this NPM package, if you use node called PG logical replication, or you can use something more advanced like Debezium, which is a library that kind of automates that. Now, as I already mentioned, I already have the services running on Avin. So my Postgres database has some data in it and we're going to see what it has. So if I go to the, my, to my database and I open the orders table, I'm going to see that I have some entries here. Okay. So let's investigate our node script. So our node script is going to look like this. We're connecting to our Kafka and we're explicitly connecting to our producer. And then we have a start function, which starts all of this process. So we have a slot name and CDC slot is something that you need to define beforehand for the logical application to work. And you're going to do it like this. So you're going to call this function, which is native to Postgres. And every database has its own way of doing this. Actually, CDC can be implemented on pretty much all the databases but in this example, we're using Postgres and you're going to do like this, give it a name and use a plugin called test decoding. And this is something that's going to give us a text of the changes. All right. Now, as soon as you're going to pass the CDC slot to the connection or rather this method, a class called logical replication service, this logical replication service is going to emit some events or like data every time there's a change happens. Also, don't forget that we're going to be using this plugin and we connect to our Kafka. Okay. So every time the data comes in, we do some simple transformation, which is stripping out all the unnecessary stuff. You can pause the video and read the code if you like. Eventually we're going to end up with this payload, which is a JavaScript object. And if we wanted to send it to Kafka, we can either send it as a string or we can actually make it a JSON format, maybe easily readable. And finally, we're going to send it to the producer with a topic that we already predefined. And this is going to be our message. So let's try to run this code. I'm going to open the terminal and I'm going to run the script and Kafka producer connected. I'm going to go to one of my queries. Let's say I'm going to create an order called mousepad or not mousepad, but rather just a mousepad. I'm going to make it 20 bucks and I'm going to say shipped like this and let's execute this and one row affected. And as you can see, uh, this is basically what ended up in our Postgres logs at the end of the day. And this is something that also has to be seen in our Kafka. So I'm going to go to Avon. I'm going to open my Kafka and in Kafka, we have a section called topics. And this is a topic that I already created called order status and in order status or a specific topic, you can already fetch the messages. I'm going to switch to JSON because this is the format that we sent the message in and I'm going to say fetch messages. Now this last message is the one that we sent. So let's investigate it and we see that it's mousepad and it's shipped. All right. Now we saw that this is already working pretty well. Let's understand the shortcomings and I left it to the end to make it exciting. So there's a thing called schema shifting. What is schema shifting? Basically, 
This is our database. But every time, let's say we add a new column or we rename a column, let's say it's not status anymore, but it's, it's called something else. How is this going to be reflected in our transformation code here? And how is our Kafka going to react to it? Probably not well. So we have to adjust a lot of places. Now, if you use Debezium right away, Debezium is going to make it much easier for you, okay? And this is only one concern. There's also another problem, which is lock sequence numbers. So this has to do with the fact that our transformation code or our ETL is not always, always stable. This can actually go down. Maybe our Kafka goes down or ETL pipeline just shuts down. Maybe there's some kind of a, an uncut error within our node code. So some of the logs are not going to be picked up and some of the data might be skipped. So let's say we started here. These two did not get picked up because the server was down and then we started here. So implementing all of this logic is quite complicated. That's why it's recommended to use some already pre-made libraries that people have already taken care of. And as you can see, Tibism already can react quickly and not miss a beat, as it says. And also back pressure, a usual problem when you emit more transactions than your Kafka can consume. So there needs to be some queuing within an ETL to allow to eliminate the back pressure. All right. And now we saw that implementing all of that is difficult. How can Aven help us with this? Well, within Aven, you have a way of connecting your Kafka to your Postgres uh, almost seamlessly. So we're going to be using this Apache Kafka Connect. And Apache Kafka Connect can have connectors. And I already have one called my source Debezium. Debezium is basically this library that is available and Aven has a tons of them. So actually, if you want to create another connector, as you can see, you have a lot of choices to go with. So this is why I actually like Aven so much. So in any case, we're going to go to our connector and I just wanted to show how this one works. So we have some data here and it's basically all the configurations to let Apache Kafka connect to talk to Debezium and for Debezium to talk to our Postgres database. Okay, so if we try to visualize like this, this is going to be our database, then Debezium comes and then Apache Kafka Connect, AKK, AKC rather, and then this is connected to Kafka. So now if I try to send another query, let's say cancelled, so our shipping got cancelled for some reason, one row affected, and now I can go to our topic again. Now, this time I'm not going to go to the same topic, but rather a different one. And I put an X as a prefix just to indicate that this one is coming from Debezium itself or rather Apache Kafka Connect. And if I go to messages and I fetch messages in binary this time, not in JSON, because I set up my Debezium to emit a binary data, we're going to see that this is the binary message that came. And if you decode this, it's actually going to end up in the same similar JSON data that we saw previously. If you guys learned something new today, if you liked the video, smash like and subscribe. And please check out our sponsors because this is going to help the channel a lot. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.